G'day, it's Rob here again. Well, it's warming up in Adelaide and you can't do a lot when it's hot like this. But anyway, I thought I'd shoot a, a video today on something that might interest uh, those who like making their own tooling. You know, if you've got a lathe or a mill, or both if you're lucky, uh, you know, a, a good way to learn metalwork is to make your own tooling. And quite often, that it's, it's pretty simple, you know, very simple projects. If you want to go down that path, and I suggest you do, one of the best sites to, uh, to look at, go visit, is a site called homemadetools.net. I look at it every day. It's a terrific site, and I've contributed stuff to that, and there's a lot of stuff there. People contribute. Once again, it's a community thing, you know, giving back the community. It's the way things should be. So, yeah, I suggest you go and look at that site. Anyway, I was looking at the site this morning, and... A guy had put up a video, um, yeah, a video on a, a, a homemade uh, tap holder, you know, when you got taps and dies and you're cutting threads. I mean, everybody should have a, a tap and die set and even, you know, those cheap ones, they do the job. I've used those little cheap sets and I've used good quality stuff for years. Anyway, the guy uh, made a, a tap holder. Uh, Quite a simple one. Uh, I'll put up a, a screen grab of it here now, and also the uh, a screen grab of the of the actual uh, web page for homemade tools. Okay, so there you can see the, the design. It's, it's a simple design. It's got two pull together bolts and a couple of handles stuck on. And I look at that and thought, yeah, that's, that's pretty similar to one I got, but mine is an even simpler design. And it's one that I got from a garage sale. I never made it, but it would be so simple to make. It's a great little project. So I thought I'd shoot a bit of video, you know, show you the different types of tap holders that I've got, and show you, yeah, a simple one you can make yourself which will work just as good and yeah I think it's great I use it all the time okay let's get on with it so let's look at a couple of typical small tap and die sets that a lot of people would have I've had these for like 40 years these are Japanese both of these but the Chinese ones are a direct knockoff of this type of set here's a 40 piece set with a BSW SAE and here's a, a metric set uh, 20 piece. I use them both, you know, I mean this is a nice little set. You can see I've replaced on both of them taps that have broken over the years with high speed steel because these sets, the taps are always, and the dies, are always uh, high carbon steel so they're not going to be high speed steel but they, they work, they do the job. Now the downside with these sets are that they, they can be harder to start because they don't cut as nicely to begin with but they don't cut as nicely right through really but they um, they quite often you, they can be difficult to start and if you get a, a tap holder and you don't even get one in this set all you got is a <laughs> all you got was a die holder well, hang on no sorry there was a tap holder but it's long lost that went in that hole there but that's now full of of taps so yeah i mean i thought wow that's not right surely there's a tap holder yeah Okay, there was a tap holder, but who knows. So here you are, here's a set with a tap holder and a die holder, and they're both pretty, they're both pretty dinky little things. I made up a, a bigger one of these too. I mean, that's another project you can make, but today we're looking at the taps. So this one actually comes with two sorts. I've got a little handheld one here, a little, you know, single hand one, which is handy at times for really small stuff. You get on the small sizes, you know, they're okay. That's good. And then you've got this, one here, you can see it's all, okay this one here which is your basic little, little, uh, whoop, wrong way, this is the basic little open and close type jaw set, you know, one, they work, they work quite well, you know, they're, they're, they're good, and quite often I'll use this close into the lathe, you know, eh, you know, they're okay, but I mean, you, Small stuff you can feel okay with this, but when you get to the bigger sizes, you know, these cut into your fingers there, you know, 
they're um, hard going at times, so you want some bigger ones. So, yeah, if you're doing big taps, bigger tap holder, and if you're doing small, well, you want small. It's just like lathes, you know, they're, they're made to a size to do a certain, just to do a certain job. Okay, so I'll show you the other ones of these I've got, because if I see these at garage sales, I'll quite, quite often grab them and pick them up, because, you know, you get them cheap, and most of the time they're better than the ones that come with the kit. So, okay, let's have a look at the, uh, the other tap holders I've got. So here's the one out of the, the kit. Here's a, a more upmarket one, which I picked up at a garage sale. And uh, yeah, it's a nice size. It's just pretty much the same, but fractionally bigger. This is sort of cast frame, but this one is steel, so this is more durable. Okay, so the next size up is a really big one. Now, this is a good one. I mean, on these, you want to check the jaws, they can get sloppy, a bit worn, but you can easily just regrind them or remill them or file them, and they'll come up with that's a good, big, handy size. That will do, yeah, a lot of the medium to large stuff, and this will do the smaller stuff. So they're all good. And then, as you've got that little hand jobby, well, you've got this sort here, which is basically emulates that, but is bigger and better, and it takes two sizes of uh, shank. Well, several sizes. It is expandable chuck, but you've got a limited range, really. This one goes up to 3 8 It's a P&M. Good brand. P&M is always good brand. I think that's P&M as well. Uh, yeah, that's P&M as well. So if you buy P&M, you can't go wrong. Now, the one that I'm talking about that was homemade that is the little project. I'll show you that now. And here it is. It's a simple, simple thing. There's only four components in it, as you can see. And anybody could make this up on their, on their lathe without any trouble whatsoever. Even if you don't have a mill, you could just basically machine those, uh, those tap holder jaws, even with a file if you uh, took your time and kept at it. No, we'll, we'll have a close look at this one. I really like this. I use this quite often. So here are the four components. It's actually stamped with the previous owner's initials, EJL. So EJL made this. It's obviously not a factory unit. EJL did a pretty good job on it. But as you can see, it's just so, so simple. Hole straight through and a threaded hole. So your threaded section goes through the hole. You've made it a bit on the sloppy side for some reason, but I don't know why that is. And then it just screws into the, the thread on the other side block. And this one comes in the same way. And yeah, that one's sloppy too. I don't think you could have machined that a bit better. But anyway, you can see the way the whole thing just goes together. So that's it. I mean, that's what we're going to do. Just make those four components. If you want some basic measurements, I suppose I'll run the tape measure over. So oh, what have we got? 40 mil thread, 10 mil collar, 125 mil handle. You could easily knurl that, or you could make it bigger diameter so you get a better grip on it, it doesn't dig into your finger so much. You could actually just bring that collar size straight back, it was, and it would be perfectly OK, it would be better actually, and then just knurl it. And uh, well, knurling can dig into your fingers, sometimes it's better not to knurl stuff, you know. If it's heavy knurling, it can be aggressive. Um, if it's very fine knurling, as p &N would use, like that, well that's OK, that won't rough up your fingers, and you can see that actually it's a low profile flattened off type nil. But a heavy coarse nil, yeah. It's like handling rebar, it, it gives your hands hell. So you've got the measurements on that. The thread is looks like Whitworth. You can make the thread whatever you want to use. And the little blocks. It's that 45 long. 
15 deep. Get 15 across. That's it. Okay, well there you go. Just a short little video just to show you uh, what you can do if you've know, got a bit of spare time, you want to make something up. Great little project. Very, very simple. And uh, yeah, uh, steer towards the uh, homemade tool site as well because I think it's a great site and I'm always out to give other channels and sites a plug if I think they're doing a good job and they're going to help, uh, help out the metal workers. Okay, well look, that's it from me. Boy, it's going to be hot today. So until next time, see you around. Cheers.